TK, for our last key matchup here this week in the SEC, we have Tennessee at Florida. I'm going to go ahead and throw that graphic up here on the 365 Sports YouTube channel. You can see Tennessee and Florida both 2-1 and one on the year. Florida with that conference loss to Alabama last week, but a close one there in the swamp. You can see that line has moved down a little bit, a little bit of money coming in on Tennessee. It was 20 earlier in the week. It's come down to Florida minus 19 and a 7 p.m. kickoff there in the swamp as you have this you know, historic rivalry with another chapter. UT's lost eight in a row down in the swamp, TK. They've lost four in a row total. So uh, Tennessee and Florida, uh, you know, what's what's the what's the vibe going into this one? What are, what are, what's your research taught you here, TK? What do you think? Man, uh, well, if research tells us anything, it tells us that we should be taking Florida in this one. And and, and I think I'm going to stick with good old research because every um, journal obviously struggled. But they get AR. They might be getting AR fifteen back in full into full capacity. But um, if they do get him back, I think that they really steamroll Tennessee. You know, uh, you know Hooker or Milton. You know, you kind of got this is a kind of a, a four quarterback situation we got going on here. Absolutely um, crazy how many quarterbacks could play in this game. Y- yeah, it's it's kind of wild. But but. Um, you know, I, I I think that if if Joe Milton's healthy and and can roll, I think that that's that's who gives Tennessee the better opportunity. Honestly, in my own opinion. Well, TK, I love the uh, the saying "styles make fights," right? Uh, that's what they say in you know UFC and all this kind of stuff that I've said before. I see a Rodney Garner. You know a little bit about Rodney Garner, don't you? Uh, Coach G, that's the man. Uh, a Rodney Garner coach defensive line that's only given up 1.7 yards per carry. I joked with uh, somebody earlier this week. Rodney Garner's been been around, you know, since Moses. I mean, he was over there. He <laughs> he, he knows what's going on with uh, with how to play defense on that front in the SEC, and they're only giving up 1.7 yards a carry this year. TK, I don't care who you're playing. Only giving up 1.7 yards of carry, that's strong on that defensive front. So I like that matchup of a strong front seven for Tennessee versus that strong running game of Florida. It's it's uh, it's intriguing to me. I like I want to see how Florida does because let's be honest, TK. I know Alabama's Alabama, but that defensive front didn't look great against Alabama. There were there was missed assignments and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, there were. Um, you know, speaking on this line being at nineteen, I I I think it might may be a little high. Um, I think this game will probably be a little closer than that. Uh, probably a probably a, a thirty. I'm calling a thirty-four. Ooh, thirty-five, thirty-five, twenty-eight game. So you're gonna think it's within a touchdown. That that would be honestly to me that would be a huge, uh, almost a moral victory for ten. I know there's no such thing as moral victories in the SEC, but if Josh Heupel is able to go in and keep it close after what uh, Florida did against Alabama last week in the swamp, I think that'll be a big, big deal. I do question, you know, is is Florida able to get over the emotional? Uh, drain it was of losing on a failed two point conversion to that Alabama team, having to refocus. You know they beat they beat Tennessee so many years in a row. This rivalry's kind of lost its luster a little bit. I wonder if Josh Heupel and company can you know get some things uh, ironed out offensively and then lean on that defense a little bit. Um, they do get K- uh, Cooper Mays, the brother of Cade Mays, who was formerly at Georgia. Uh, Cade Mays plays tackle for him, but Cooper Mays is their center. So, TK, when you get your center back on offense, especially as fast as Josh Hypo wants to play, I mean, talk, snapping the ball like every 10 seconds. This is like mm-hmm. warp speed type stuff. Uh, just talk about when you get that guy in the middle of your offensive line back, how, can, how do you think that might affect Tennessee in this game? Well, I think it's huge. That's a huge position. My, my college roommate was Ben Jones, who was our center, center for the Tennessee Titans now. Um, those guys have a lot of responsibility sometimes, uh, making calls, ID in the mic. Um, they're, they're, they're really the, the leader of that offensive line. So you're kind of getting a leader back from that standpoint, a vocal leader, somebody that communicates um, up front. So I think that could play a big role as well in this game being a little bit closer than some might think. Yeah, and, uh, t- uh, you know, Florida held 
Alabama also defensively, they held Alabama under 100 yards rushing. So on both sides, the Florida trenches were uh, were dominant. You said 35-28 Florida over Tennessee. I'm going to take the Gators as well, but I also think it'll be closer than most people think. I'm going to say uh, Florida. I, I like that Tennessee defense. I think they're going to hold them uh, under a little bit. I'm going to say Florida 31 and Tennessee 21. I'm going to go 10-point 10, 10 game on it. And then TK, uh, just to kind of round out our show here, our other games, we have Missouri over Boston, Missouri against Boston College at Boston College. Now, remember, Phil Jakovic, the quarterback for Boston College, is out. So real kind of rapid fire on these. Who do you like in Missouri versus Boston College? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going with Mizzou on this one. I, I think um, their running game is going to get them to – to victory for sure in this one. I don't, th I don't think BC sees the type of um, offensive linemen, one, um, but the type of backs week in and week out that they're going to see um, this Saturday. Yeah, Tyler Beatty's already had a 200-yard uh, rushing game, uh, single game performance in this year. They're a one-and-a-half point favorite on the road. I think they cover that. I like Missouri to win on the road. We don't even have to mention Georgia and Vanderbilt because we both know that that spanking is coming over there. They're a 34-point favorite in uh, the Georgia's home away from home there in Nashville. It's going to be a lot of red, red and black there in Nashville. As uh, you know, the Georgia that's, people – That's the crew. The Georgia people like to go party on Broadway up there, man. You know, you know how that is. Yeah, um, honk, honky tonk. That's it. That's it. They're going to Tootsie's up there. You might find TK. TK may make a ride up there. Go, go be on the on the stage at Tootsie's before this thing's over with. Who, who knows? You can find me at uh, Ten Roof. Ten Roof. <laughs> And we're going to Blake Shelton or Luke Bryan's place over there. Who knows what's going to happen? But then you got uh, Auburn hosting Georgia State. Uh, Auburn played a, a played a good ball game against Penn State last week, but I think we'll both know that they're going to take care of Georgia State. Um, Alabama, of course, gets Southern Miss. Lord help Southern Miss with that. Uh, you know, Nick Saban was just – he's jumping on media members this week, you know, telling them, asking them if any of them ever played ball before all this. Hey, 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 with this two weeks in a row, he he's had, you know, issues with the way his teams perform. So you can expect that they're going to shellack them boys. 